Hello everyone. Here pretty soon you're going to be doing your first argumentative academic style essay. So far we've been doing primarily narratives, um, you know, writing about things that are fairly close to you, things that you know pretty well. Um, but before too long you're going to be writing those academic essays that you probably hated writing in high school, but hopefully you're going to enjoy writing a little bit more in college. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about invention strategies. How do you go from uh, a basic or really vague idea to something that constitutes a thesis or an argument? So let's talk about the invention phase first. Uh, typically, uh, most people like to devise a plan first. Uh, some people will schedule their writing process. You know, they'll set themselves uh, deadlines for when they want to have rough drafts done. Um, and of course you do have somewhat of a schedule imposed on you when you're writing for a class because you do have deadlines. Um, but nonetheless, some people like to even break that uh, schedule down even further and give themselves specific deadlines for when they want to have a thesis done, when they want to have the first couple of pages done, etc. So if you find that helpful, um, you might want to give it a crack. Personally, when I write, I don't actually come up with a schedule. I just sit down and start writing and uh, try to get as much knocked out as I can before uh, I drive myself completely insane. Um, here's some questions to think about as you're exploring your rhetorical situation. Um, in this case, we're, uh, the rhetorical situation refers to uh, considering the audience that you're writing for, considering the situation that you're writing in. You know, in this case, you're writing an academic essay in a college for a specific audience, being myself and your classmates. So think about that. Uh, what is your purpose? How is the purpose for writing going to affect your topic and going to affect the type of writing that you do? Read over the assignment for the uh, academic papers really well. Read over the prompts and really think about what is the purpose of this assignment? What am I trying to accomplish? Who is your audience? Um, in this case, you're writing primarily for your classmates and for myself. And I don't want you to forget that you are writing for your classmates as well as me. So what kinds of things do you need to consider about your audience that are going to affect uh, the way that you write and the way that you structure your paper? And what genre am I using? In this case, you're writing academic. Um, as you move on into the business or uh, professional world, the genre will change and the wording might change and the structure might change. What sort of research will you need to conduct? The final papers in this class, all of your academic essays that you write, are going to require some level of research. For your profile paper, you had to do minimal amount of research, including some interviews. But now you're going to start doing actual database and library research. So you need to think about that and plan that research into your overall process. All right, and this is the place that I actually like to start. Most of the time when I have to write an essay uh, for a class or for a work assignment or something along those lines, I actually just like to sit down and start writing. I usually have some vague idea of where I want to go with the essay based on the assignment that I've been given, but what I'll do is I'll take that vague idea or those vague ideas and I'll just start writing um, with no expectation of taking what I'm writing and turning it in for anything. It's just for my purposes. So, you know, some, some ideas here for free writing. Just sit down, write for five or ten minutes. Um, after you're done writing, look back at what you've written and really think about the topic that's come out of that writing. Um, sometimes brainstorming on paper can really help you sort of consolidate some of your ideas and really think through some of your ideas. Um, when you're done with that, just, you know, keep working. These are the things that become your drafts. Uh, look back at what you've written in your free writing, pick out some of the better ideas, the ones that you think you want to run with, and then start trying to turn those ideas into actual drafts, early, early drafts of your paper. Um, so moving right along. When you're brainstorming, don't stop, don't edit. Uh, when you're brainstorming, it's basically the same thing as free writing. I, I actually do the same. I actually do those two things together. Brainstorming and free writing for me are the same thing because when I brainstorm, I free write. Um, but one thing that you have to get used to when you're brainstorming and you're free writing 
is you don't stop. You don't edit. You don't think, well, did what I just write make any sense to anyone besides myself? It doesn't matter. What you're trying to do is get ideas out. You're trying to get something on paper that's going to help you think through the topic. Um, when you're looking back over it, note keywords and short phrases and list them under your subject. These are the ideas that are surfacing in your brain. These are the things that are sort of floating up, your subconscious is picking out, and eventually, often, these are the things that are going to constitute uh, the, the main crux of your thesis, the main crux of your argument. Think about your topic uh, and keep your list going uh, for your time limit if you decide to set one. Just keep writing. Uh, this is another invention strategy that lots of people enjoy using, um, and this is just the basic map or cluster. Um, you start with the sort of rough idea of what you want to write about, um, and then you sort of branch out into all of the related concepts and ideas that, are, that uh, feed back into that central idea. Um, so, for example, um, in this uh, cluster we have the word rhetoric as being the start, um, rhetoric being uh, the art of argumentation, uh, the art of communication. Um, and you see here we have all of the different ideas that feed into rhetoric, or at least some of the different ideas that feed into rhetoric being connected here via bubbles. So communication, persuasion, because argumentation and persuasion go hand in hand. Politics, uh, modern uses, and then history, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then when you're done with that, you sort of look back over it and you think about the connections between those ideas. Um, obviously, if you're writing an, uh, an argumentative essay for an academic class, it's probably going to be a little more complicated than this. This is a really simple, ex uh, really simple example. But think about what are the connections between those ideas. And those connections are going to help you start structuring your actual paper, structuring your actual argument. Um, so, you know, once you've got the cluster, it's just like with free writing. You sort of take a step back and you look at it and you say, what have I got here and what can I make out of it? Writing in a lot of ways is just like every other art form. Um, you know, if you've, if, uh, say for example, you have a sculptor, he's looking at a giant piece of rock. And a lot of times a sculptor will look at a piece of rock and just sort of step back and think to themselves, okay, what can this rock become? The rock in and of itself isn't necessarily a work of art. So that's what you're doing with these rough drafts or with these um, map cluster activities, is you're creating that piece of rock and then you're taking a step back and you're looking at it and saying to yourself, where can I go with this? Outlines. This is another way that a lot of people like to um, sort of start planning out academic essays. Um, you think about, and actually a lot of times outlines will uh, be fed into by map or cluster ideas. A lot of people like to start with a map or cluster and then create an outline from that. Um, make the basic unstructured list of your major and minor topics. So the introduction is going to be what is my overall thesis statement, what is my overall thesis argument, and then what are those things that connect to that argument that help defend it? And you can look back at your out, or no, I'm sorry, you can look back at your cluster and look at some of those other major and minor ideas that feed into it and decide what do I need to discuss in order to defend that central thesis. And I'm going to say this now, and you're going to hear me repeat this um, in several other videos probably. The thesis statement or the thesis question is what an academic essay is all about. When you're writing your papers and you look at those major ideas and you look at those minor ideas and the paragraphs that create those, always think to yourself, how does this relate to the thesis? If it doesn't relate to the thesis, it doesn't belong in the paper. That's the difference between a focused essay and a rambling essay. A rambling essay will have lots of really good ideas that don't necessarily connect back to the actual thesis. A focused essay will be focused like a laser on defending that thesis. So keep that in mind as you're writing. And always remember to ask yourself, is what I'm writing right now working with my thesis? Is it defending that thesis in some way? Keep a journal. Um, we've already had uh, some students suggesting in the discussion boards um, uh, to do this as part of your writing process. 
Um, and you know, a lot of times the journal is the place where you do free writing. Um, some questions to ask when you're thinking about topics. Why is the topic important to me? Um, a lot of times we don't think of academic essays as being about topics that are important to us. And you know what, in high school it might not have been important to you because you were being fed specific topics and told to write about them. However, in college you're given a lot more freedom to write about topics that interest you. And I definitely suggest whenever you're given that opportunity to pick something that is important to you because the writing will be a lot easier and will make you a lot happier. How does it relate to me? How do I feel about it? Uh, when you start considering uh, issues of reliability, when you start considering issues, when you start considering issues of bias, uh, you have to start thinking about how you feel about a topic because often in academic essays, uh, you want to try and remove as much bias as possible, um, if it even is possible with the topic that you're writing about. Um, do you feel good, bad, or indifferent about the topic? Um, if it's indifferent, uh, I often suggest that students just stay away from the topic. If you feel indifferent about it, then it's not important to you. Um, how does it affect you in your daily life, and what, uh, and how might my connection to this change in the future? These are just a few of the things to start thinking about um, as you're sort of brainstorming on your topic. Um, if you're writing to, if you're brainstorming in your journal to uh, eventually produce um, some type some type of challenging uh, argument or even if you're just free writing to create eventually some type of narrative, um, this activity actually works well with both uh, where you essentially take the problems that you're facing with your essay. Uh, maybe it's questions of what do you want your thesis to be or maybe it's that you're questioning your overall stance on the topic um, and you have other characters deal with it. Um, this is just a form of sort of play acting and writing. Um, you let the other characters sort of flesh out your ideas on paper and you know for some people this works. Some people uh, find that they can think much better when they sort of remove themselves from the process and let the process play out um, via imaginary characters. And finally, um, you know additional questions. Take a look at the invention strategy section of the St. Martin's Guide. Um, it does have a lot of really good information in there uh, that can help you um, or it might just have some information that helps explain some of the things that I've talked about here a little bit better. So good luck with your essays and let me know if you have any questions.